Story recapped here. Today, I'm going to explain a comedy, crime, and drama film called Robot and Frank. Spoilers ahead. Watch out and take care. A faint light shines on a keyhole as someone tries to pick it. A burglar enters the home and rummages through the belongings of the unsuspecting owner. He grabs all the jewelry and money, but a picture frame grabs his attention. It is the owner's family, and the burglar, Frank, realizes what he's doing and leaves. In Cold Spring, New York, Frank cleans up some broken glass and deposits a frame into his safe. He tries to eat his cereal but finds that the milk has spoiled. After a while, he receives a call from his daughter, Madison, who is currently in Turkmenistan. She assures him that she's well and checks up on his father's condition. The connection suddenly gets cut off, leaving Frank disappointed. Frank walks down the road, and a remarkably thin vehicle passes him. He arrives at the library, and there, Jennifer, the librarian, meets him. He dusts off his ancient flirting skills and asks for her phone number. Jennifer laughs but denies his proposition. As they try to find a book, a robot named Mr. Darcy disrupts them. Jennifer informs Frank about the library's renovation, saying that she won't be working there anymore. Frank then gets a call from his son, Hunter. They talk about a restaurant down the street that Frank intends to eat at, only to realize they've closed. Meanwhile, Frank enters a shop. The kleptomaniac within him cannot help but swipe items on display. The clerk notices this and threatens to call the cops on him, so he acts innocent and leaves. While walking, his son catches up to him. Hunter scolds his old man for not waiting. Frank enters the car, and they drive home. At home, Frank criticizes Hunter's parenting, saying he shouldn't buy his kids toys and gadgets. Hunter agrees to disagree and changes the conversation to Frank's messy home. He confronts his father about his memory problem, but Frank is too proud to accept any help. However, Hunter's excitement doesn't dissolve as he leads Frank to his car. In the trunk is a robot. Frank instantly expresses his dissatisfaction, but Hunter says to give it a chance. The robot turns on and greets Frank, Frank interrogates him by asking why it knows who he is. The robot enters the home to clean up the mess and whips something up for them to eat. At the dinner table, Frank asks about his ex-wife. Hunter says that she also has a robot that she appreciates, unlike Frank. The robot then enters the room with a freshly baked cake and offers his assistance and company to Frank. He harshly denies it, causing Hunter to show his frustration. Hunter stands his ground and says that the robot will stay or else he'll send Frank to a retirement home. Hunter drives away, leaving the two standing on the porch. Frank tries to turn the robot off, but it requests for him to let go so it can do the dishes. The robot does all the errands, from taking out the trash to buying groceries, seamlessly integrating itself into Frank's life. It wakes up Frank, and he waves his hands in front of it, again forgetting where the robot came from. For breakfast, the robot hands him a piece of grapefruit, but Frank asks for cereal. The robot says cereal is for children, and Frank calls it stupid. While the robot talks about plans for them to start a garden, Frank leaves to get some cookies. He ignores the robot, so it starts to call Hunter. Frank pleads it not to because he doesn't want to go to the retirement home. Leaves fall on a patch of soil the robot's preparing. Frank sits from afar, staring at it judgingly. For lunch, Frank is served a portion of healthy greens and rice. He looks unhappy as he desperately wants his cereal back. In the forest, they take a walk while Frank expresses his hatred of hikes. He says that he'd rather die than do what the robot wants him to do. The robot guilt trips Frank by saying that it'll be sent back to the warehouse if he dies. Frank changes his attitude and leads the way. The two arrive at the library, and Frank asks the robot to wait outside. Mr. Darcy meets him at the desk, and he asks for Jennifer. Jennifer is talking to the library's new owner, Jake, and Frank introduces himself. He doesn't remember the talk they had yesterday about the renovation. When Jake leaves, Frank instantly forgets who he is. An upset Frank observes as every book in the library gets taken. To try and cheer him up, Jennifer shows him her most valuable book. Frank exits the library to see a group of kids playing with a robot. He advises the robot to say self-destruct sequence initialized so the kids won't bother it anymore. The robot doesn't understand, and they make their way to the restaurant that Frank forgot was closed. At the store, Frank pockets another figurine. A new clerk meets them who offers their lavender soaps. She compliments the robot, but the woman from before shows aggression towards Frank. Frank sneakily returns the item while the woman threatens to make a citizen's arrest. He reveals his empty pockets and proceeds to leave the store. On their way home, Frank complains to his daughter about his new companion. As they converse, Frank realizes that the item he tried to steal is in the bag. The robot confesses that it got the item as it thought that Frank forgot it. Back at home, Frank asks the robot if it knows what stealing is. He further asks if the robot is programmed to obey the law, to which the robot replies no. With this newfound information, he feels as though having the robot around isn't that bad. But the robot's sudden reminder of his enema makes him retract that thought. The next day, Frank teaches the robot how to pick a lock. They chat about Frank's past and his life as a criminal. The robot knows his past allegations but not the James Bond-esque stories he has. Frank was a jewelry thief living a life of crime and excitement. After a while, the robot successfully picks the lock. The two form a bond as Frank realizes what he and the robot can do. At the library, the two inspect the scene of their first potential robbery. 
Jennifer finally meets the robot and introduces it to Mr. Darcy. The two talk about how technology has caught up to them. Books are now available anywhere on the web, hence, the less of a need for actual libraries. She invites him for the upcoming fundraiser, and Frank happily accepts. Later that night, Hunter calls Frank while they're preparing. He complains about Madison scolding him for bringing Frank a robot. Hunter says that the robot will stay whether Frank likes it or not. Strangely enough, he agrees, saying that he wants to keep the robot for good. In the middle of the night, Frank and the robot prepare to enter the library. Frank spray paints the camera, and then the robot picks the lock. Inside, the robot opens the bookcase while Frank checks the building's blueprints. He babbles on about his life, and the robot reminds him to be quiet. Frank asks why it's wearing a space helmet, and they exit the building, with Frank unknowingly leaving his glasses behind. Morning arrives, and yet another plate of healthy breakfast is served. Frank doesn't mind the food anymore as he's too busy planning their next robbery. At the fundraiser, Frank stands out amongst the crowd, looking timeless in his suit. Jennifer stands beside him, feeling uneasy. She tells Frank about someone who broke into the library the night before. In the distance, the robot brings the stolen book all wrapped up, but Frank signals him to abort. The two interact with the robots, encouraging them to mingle with one another. Jake and his wife approach them, he compliments Frank, but Frank mistook it as an insult. Jake laughs it off and steals Jennifer for a while. The night continues, and Frank looks more and more anxious at every passing second. Jake approaches him and asks him if he ever went to prison. Frank neither confirms nor denies, so Jake asks if he wears reading glasses. Frank lies, and Jake asks him to leave. Jennifer returns to Frank after mingling with the crowd. Frank expresses his concern as he finds it odd how everyone at the party looks wealthy, but Jennifer thinks he just had too much to drink. Frank then zones out and focuses on the piece of jewelry a woman is wearing. At home, Frank reviews images taken from the party. He plans to rob again, but this time the robot doesn't want to help him. The only way it will agree is if Frank guarantees there's no risk. He agrees with that condition, and his gears start turning. Frank looks at a man from afar using his binoculars. They talk about how the robot didn't speak to Mr. Darcy last night, seeming as if Frank provokes the robot to show its sentience. Later that day, Jennifer visits Frank for their dinner, disrupting his scheming session. He asks her to come back later, and she leans her head on the door in frustration. Frank finally opens the door, only to see her driving away. Frank is back at his study table, meticulously finalizing their plan. The robot is happy with Frank's regained enthusiasm. He even challenges the robot to arm wrestle. He struggles embarrassingly, but a sudden knock on the door interrupts them. It's Madison, finally finding the time to visit her father. They reconnect, and she says that she's there to save him. Madison then whispers into the robot, turning it off. Later that day, Madison shares her experiences in Turkmenistan. Frank doesn't listen as he worries about his friend. A new day comes, and Frank's morning is incomplete as his companion is not there to greet him. He approaches the robot and tries to wake it up. Madison returns home with some groceries and a box of cereal. Frank says he prefers the robot's cooking and asks her to wake it up, but she refuses. In the woods, Frank is all alone as he observes their target. He feels frustrated as his companion is not there to assist him. Frank returns home and makes a mess of the kitchen as he looks for something. He asks Madison to make some lasagna, and she accepts the challenge. Madison serves a sad bowl of pasta with red sauce to her father. He insults the dish and says he wants to eat at the restaurant in the town. She reminds him that it's closed and asks for him to appreciate the food she cooked. With no choice, he eats the food, blurting out that he doesn't need her to be with him. Morning arrives, and Frank makes his way downstairs to see the living room spotless. He confronts a busy Madison who says she just finished cleaning up. Frank doubts his daughter and asks if she turned on the robot. She denies his accusations and still refuses to turn the robot on. Frank snaps and throws a bag of pasta at her, saying that the robot is not some slave that she can just turn on and off. Madison admits that she used the robot, and he comforts his frustrated daughter. Frank again asks for her to turn the robot on, saying he needs his friend back. The robot awakens, and Frank whispers that they'll execute the robbery later at night. Night arrives, and Frank starts to explain the plan. The target is the couple, Jake and his wife. They plan to steal jewelry in their home while they're out for an event. Now that it knows all the details, the robot asks how they'll accomplish such a feat as their house will most likely have top-notch security systems. Frank says that security systems are designed by security companies and not thieves. Someone like him can easily find a spot that the system doesn't account for. The two sneak around the house, trying to find a way in. Luckily, a door without an alarm is conveniently left open. Frank effortlessly finds the safe, and the robot is tasked to try every lock combination until it gets it right. As they try to leave, Jake and his wife arrive. The two eavesdrop on the fighting couple, but the fight quickly turns into passionate lovemaking. Back at home, Frank examines their spoils and is shocked to find extremely high-quality jewelry. He hides it in his safe, but he doesn't seem happy with the outcome. The next day, Frank and Madison lounge in the backyard. Their relaxation time gets interrupted by Jake and the sheriff. Jake accuses Frank of stealing his belongings, but Frank plays dumb. Meanwhile, the sheriff is starstruck at the sight of the infamous thief. Despite being a prime suspect, the sheriff believes that someone Frank's age can't pull off such a complex robbery. 
he even invites Frank to be his consultant. However, he rejects the offer. Before leaving, Jake shouts, saying he knows Frank did it. The sheriff pulls him away, knocking the drink off the table, which the robot then catches instantaneously. The sheriff notices this and leaves without saying anything. Later that day, Madison says her goodbyes. Frank gives her some jewelry as a gift and assures her that it isn't from Jake. She drives off, passing a van parked outside Frank's home. Frank and the robot enter the house and speculate what the van's doing there. Smoke spews out the chimney as Frank burns up all the evidence of the robbery. The robot warns Frank that the sheriff can use its memory against him, advising Frank to reformat its memory. Frank frantically stores the jewelry in a plastic bag. He tries to cut the piece in half, but he injures his finger. The robot bandages him up, and Frank grows unstable. Frank tells the robot to call Hunter and tell him he's dying. Hunter drives to Frank's home looking anxious. Meanwhile, Frank lays in his bed to try and act sick. Hunter enters the room and wakes his father up. Frank puts on a show, acting all dramatic and emotional. He apologizes for not being a good father, thanking Hunter for always taking care of him. His son reminisces about their humble past, but Frank transitions the conversation to his genuine objective, asking his son to take the case filled with the stolen goods somewhere safe. Hunter is reluctant, but an intense cough from his father makes him accept immediately. As Hunter drives off, the van blocks him, and police start surrounding him. The sheriff interrogates him and opens up the trunk. Inside the bag are the figurines Frank stole from the store. Jake is still suspicious and demands the sheriff to search the house. The police begin their search, and Hunter worries about his supposedly sick father. Frank gives him a cheeky look and says he's just cooperating with the cops. Hunter is frustrated with his father's games and berates him about pretending to be dying. He insults him and the robot, who stays silent throughout the mess. Jake realizes something and suggests downloading the robot's memory. Jake starts hitting the robot, but it suddenly initiates a self-destruct sequence and starts counting down. Frank runs out, but Hunter assures them that the robot is lying. But as the countdown nears zero, they can't help but run away, only to realize that it's lying. Frank drives away in Hunter's car, picking the robot up in the backyard. Hunter sarcastically commands the police, and Jake stands dumbfounded. In the car, the robot revisits the idea of reformatting its memory. Frank doesn't want to do it and says they'll just run off together. They stop at the library, lockpicking their way into Jennifer's office. He shares his problem, and Jennifer realizes that he took the book. Frank confesses, but the picture frames grab his attention. He takes the photo of Jennifer and her husband and sees himself. Frank realizes that Jennifer is his wife, and with that realization, he kisses her. He and the robot leave the library to walk home. In his room, Frank's condition deteriorates. The robot urges him again to reformat its memory, saying that they can continue to plan their next heist afterward. It finally convinces Frank, and he agrees. Frank presses the button at the back of the robot, turning it off. Days pass and Hunter approaches his father, who has been entirely consumed by his memory loss. Frank has suffered the same fate as his friend. He reunites with his family, eating at the same table, sharing laughs and stories. As they say their goodbyes, Frank hands Hunter a note. In it states to check under the robot's garden for the jewelry he stole. Subscribe to watch more videos like this. Turn on notifications. And leave a like it really helps the channel out. Thank you for watching.